A number of years ago, my wife and I made a pact that when we became empty nesters, we'd go on a trip at least every four months. Our thought was, we don't know what tomorrow brings, so why miss a chance to see some pretty amazing places around the world while we are still young? Our goal for this video blog is to encourage you all, no matter what age, to not sit around and watch the world go by, but go see the world. Hi everybody, welcome to Travel with Danny Deb. I'm Dan. And I'm Deb. Well, listen, a couple years ago we were talking about going to Europe on our 25th anniversary. Yeah. But one day I got a ping from Cheapo Air that said round trip airfare from Minneapolis to Frankfurt, Germany for $279. And I'm like, what? So I yelled at Deb, Deb, do you want to go to Europe early? And I said, yes, of course, book it. Yep, so we did book it. Mm -hmm. And get this, we went to Europe for 10 days, the two of us, yeah. uh, round trip airfare, uh, rent a car for 10 days, Airbnb and hotel for only $1,900. And that's not $1,900 per person, mm -hmm. that was $1,900 for the two of us. Now yeah. that didn't include food. Or wine. Oh, I forgot about the wine. The wine okay, so yeah. the trip cost $6,500. No, no, not really. We didn't drink that much wine. Yeah. <laughs> now, food and wine will be above that 1900 Now, we can't guarantee mm -hmm. you're going to get that price, but hopefully you'll do what we do, and you dig around, you look. Yeah. Make sure you also sign up for all of those notifications. Yeah. Because that's what I did, and I got that paying for $279. Yep. So we went to four different countries. We're going to show these in four different videos. So this video, we're talking about Strasbourg, France. And Deb, tell everybody about Strasbourg. Well, Strasbourg, France is listed as a World Heritage Site and it's located in eastern France at the border with Germany just off the Rhine River. Now we stayed in the Grand Ile and this part of the city is the perfect example of a medieval city that you would find on the Rhine. Now what's cool about this town is do you get Paris or do you get Munich? And what I mean by that is even though you're in France, the entire town's architecture is so German yet the culture is so French. The food in the restaurants were outstanding, giving you both French and German cuisine. And one of our favorite things about Strasbourg was being at the street cafe in the morning, having fresh pastries and French press coffee. It was so French, and it was just a delightful thing to do. It was to French, do. you it know, really you got fun. the French newspaper, you're sipping mm -hmm. on your little cup of coffee, you lower it down, just like you, you know, the spies do, you're looking around. But mm -hmm. no. no, there I go yeah. again. There you go. Didn't have the newspaper. Mm, no. <laughs> You know, Deb, another cool thing is uh, the canals. It's like Amsterdam and Strasbourg. Mm -hmm. Now, what I mean by that is they have these canals that go all over the city, and you can take this beautiful glass top boat to take you to many locations like timbered houses, medieval architecture, amazing bridges, history museums, the European Parliament, the Notre Dame Cathedral, Strasbourg. Oh, and Dan, remember the night when we heard the pipe organ music coming from the cathedral? Oh, that was that was cool. That was so you know, cool. We, we followed the sound and we ended up back to church. And at mm. night, it was all lit up. Yep. And we heard this. I mean, I can imagine the Phantom of the Opera yeah. guy. I would have paid anybody a hundred bucks to go play that organ. <laughs> Somebody told us that either Bach or one of those dudes. Mozart. Mozart. I don't know. Like, one yeah. of those guys. Yeah, they play that organ. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to touch the ivories that one of these geniuses uh, played would have been pretty cool. While we were in Strasbourg, we stayed at an Airbnb on the Central Island. Yeah, no, the Central Island, it's again the place to stay if you mm -hmm. can, and this uh, Airbnb was spectacular. We walked into the place and at first we thought, you know, it's a little small, but when we opened up those huge windows and there was the canal below, mm -hmm. and uh, we could people watch, we could watch the uh, cruise boat, not cruise boat, <laughs> we'd have a big <laughs> going by. <laughs> I mean the glass top boats, those yeah. flat ones yeah. going by. But it, it's a beautiful place. Try to, try to stay at an Airbnb where you're right on a canal. Yes. Now what's our biggest regret, Deb? Oh, our biggest regret is that we did not spend two or three nights there. Exactly. We kind of rushed it, you know, mm -hmm. you know, we had other places to go to, we had only 10 days. We wish we would have made this 10 day, probably a 14 day trip. Yeah. You know, so if you do go, try to extend it a little bit, especially Strasbourg, stay mm -hmm. at least two days yeah. in Strasbourg. So that's it for Strasbourg, France. Now, Deb, where are we going next? We're going to Servinia, Italy. Servinia, Italy. That was one of my favorites. And Deb, what is in Servinia, Italy? The Matterhorn. Yeah, and I know what you're thinking. You're going, no, the Matterhorn's in Switzerland. 
It is in Switzerland if you're on that side of the Matterhorn, but we discovered not only half price compared to Switzerland side, but amazing, well, we don't want to tell them. Yeah. Stay tuned for the next videos. Take care, goodbye from Travel with Danny Dip. Bye. Hi everybody, welcome. I heard a laugh. Here we go. Here we go, ready? We're settled. Three, two, one. Hi everybody, welcome to tri Welcome to AAA. Here we go. Here we go, three, two, one. Hi everybody, welcome to tri Here we go. Okay, we'll do a safety. Okay. <clears throat> that could... Here we go. <laughs> Here we are. Okay, settle. Definitely. All and right. Bye. Well, we're gonna talk to them about our next. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Here I we got go. lost. <clears throat> uh, cathedral, right? We okay. don't have to do the whole thing, do we? Well, yeah, let's just do it. <laughs>
And it turned out we were in the Cervinia during the three week gap between the winter season and the summer season. So everybody leaves town. Yeah. All the workers, the restaurants are closed. Our hotel, of course, you know, was open and it was a great place. There was just nobody there and that was just kind of, I don't know, kind of eerie but cool at the same time because you have the beautiful snow coming down and it's just quiet and just beautiful. But that night I'll never forget as the snow was coming down, very romantic. We look outside the window and it's like Mussolini's automobile sitting there. Yeah. Remember that thing? That thing was cool. That was cool. So Deb, I think Servinia is a win. What, what do you think? Oh, it was a great win. I loved it there. It was beautiful and I would 100% go back. Oh, I would too. I'd probably go in the summer though so you can enjoy the mountain biking, the hiking, horseback riding, golf, uh, fly fishing, and you can still ski. Just stay away from Servinia uh, the last three weeks of May. Yep. Go any other time, you will not be disappointed. Nope. Well, listen, Deb, uh, what's next on our 10 day driving trip of Europe? Lake Como. Lake Como? I forgot about Lake Como. Yep. I was going to jump to Venice. Yes. No, nope. You got to stick around for Lake Como, which will be the next episode. Uh, that was a surprise trip for us. Yeah. All right, see you, everybody. Bye. Leaving Servinia and heading to our next location, Venice, Italy, Deb noticed that the infamous Lake Como was only about 30 minutes out of our way. So why not? We decided to stop in and check it out. So Lake Como was not an official stop on our itinerary. Mm -mm. Uh, that's what's so nice about renting a car, yeah. you know. If you were on a train or a bus, you couldn't go, hey, let's go have lunch in Lake Como. <laughs> well, you could, but it would cost you. It was so beautiful. It's it's. Like, you can't even describe it. You have these beautiful villas, some of which have been there since Roman times. Yeah. The restaurants, the lake itself, the gardens surrounding the lakes, just the town, all the buildings crawling up into the mountains. It was just breathtaking. So Deb, isn't Lake Como the largest lake in Italy? Nope, it's not. It's not the largest lake, but it is the deepest lake. Its average depth is 505 feet, and the deepest part of the lake is over 1,300 feet, which is the reason for its incredible blue water. Now, the shoreline is over 100 miles long, and it's dotted with cute little villages. Now, Bellagio is the, one of the most prettiest villages, and is actually an island that's located right in the middle of the lake, where the two branches of the lake converge. It's often called the Pearl of Lake Como. And to get to any of these villages, you could take a car ferry or one of the many water taxis that operate year round. You know, Deb, one of the things I wish we had time for was taking the village of Granati tram all the way up the mountain. This tram climbs well over 2,500 feet, and they say once you get to the top, you have amazing views of the mountains and the lake below. It was breathtaking, and it was May, so it was kind of quiet, but yet it was mm -hmm. still pretty busy, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, so if you go to Lake Home in the summertime, man, hang on to your butts. It's going to be pretty tight, and uh, speaking of tight, driving into Lake Como, um, now we know why they have little cars in Europe. Uh, yeah. The streets were so narrow. So skinny. And we're just, you know, if you go there, be careful, and then there's a lot of these, you know, roundabouts, and then they, you end up going up a street that might be a, a wrong way and, mm -hmm. and it's kind of difficult but yeah. if you just go slow and work as a team yeah. you're going to navigate just fine yeah and then we had lunch at a pizza place right on the lake right on the water and that was really fun too that was fun mm -hmm. was a lot of people watching going on yeah. well definitely lake como is a must and we wish we would have planned at least two three days but it yeah. it wasn't even on our itinerary no no it was a day trip but uh, I'm glad we went. So am I. Yeah, tell them real quick about the little driving mishap uh, with, <laughs> with the tolls. <laughs> so we um, were driving and we had been handling the tolls pretty well all along the way, but there was like some weird signage with this one. And we went off and I'm like, I think we missed a toll. And we didn't know what to do. We didn't know if we should turn around or go back or you know, whatever. Maybe and Italian prison Yeah, so we, actually just kept going but when we got back to the United States I did a bunch of research online and I was actually able to find the toll company for that toll and pay our toll yep over the internet and it was all fine yeah we won't be arrested if we go mm -hmm. back to Italy nope. but if you do have a mishap on a toll uh, do it Deb just go online you'll find it mm -hmm. uh, they have an easy way to pay it well listen Lake Como is definitely a must yeah. and if you can go um, 
How many dates, Deb? Oh, uh, I would recommend a couple. It, it just depends on your itinerary, where you're going next, whatever. But there's a lot to see and do there. Definitely. So I would definitely recommend that you would spend a couple nights there at least. Definitely. We'll see you next time. Our next stop is where, Deb? Venice. Venice. Yes. yes, we can't wait. Wait. Wait till you see Venice. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, everybody, from Travel with Danny Deb. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome again to Travel with Danny Deb. I'm Dan. And I'm Deb. Well, we're still working on our 10 day driving trip of Europe, and our next stop is Venice, which we, well, we can't wait, but we've already been there. So. <laughs> we can't wait to tell you about it. That's it. Can't wait. <laughs> but first, we want to insert a little bit of driving uh, tips here, and we might have done this earlier, so if we have, please forgive us. But just for a reminder, so right lane is usually trucks, mm -hmm. center is people like us, left farthest third lane over is the crazy lane. And mm -hmm. again, looking in your mirror, you see a little speck, and then boom, you get yeah. hit by a shock wave because <laughs> they pass you so fast. Yeah, so, it was crazy. Yeah, just be careful. But mm -hmm. Trust us, uh, you can drive Europe. Yeah, right? for sure. All right. So tell us a little bit about Venice, Deb, and where we stayed. And we decided to stay a little bit outside of the downtown area, not on the actual island of Venice itself. So we found an Airbnb in a kind of quaint little suburb, and um, it was a great place. Just beautiful. The town there was super cool. We found a bunch of nice little restaurants and it was just fun walking around and just soaking it all in. Yeah. The compound, we call it a compound yeah. because it was a compound. It was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, pool and old Italian architecture surrounded with a huge gate. Yeah. And should we tell them about climbing over the gate <laughs> now or yeah. later? Well, Let's get it over with. Yeah, let's get it over with. So if you're going to an Airbnb or wherever, do not use a keyless entry app that they provide uh, on your phone. Uh, we won't say the name of this one, but the way it works is you show up, you have the app, you type in a code, the gate should open, you go up to your room, the door should unlock, mm -hmm. and it did. Yeah. Except when the power went out during a storm and we had to leave on the last day, pouring rain, we couldn't get out of the compound. The gates wouldn't open. Yep. None of the walkout gates would open. We had all these poor people stuck in this compound. We had to actually help a little old Italian grandmother over the fence. And this is like a cast iron pointy yeah, fence. Yeah, it was pretty tall. And she had to get over to catch a train to yeah. get to the airport. Yeah, thank goodness she's with her daughter. But yeah. you know, you don't want to be pushing up on the bone of an Italian woman over a <laughs> fence. I mean, it was a little uncomfortable, but we had to help them. Yeah. So. Without getting into the rest of how we got a hold of the owner, finally he shows up and he was able to manually open the gate. Mm -hmm. So we don't recommend places where you have to use an app to get into your location because right. if the internet's out, you're toast. You are toast. But let's talk about the good stuff, yep. Venice. Venice. Um, so we jumped on the train. Yeah, it was right by our place we were staying. So we were just able to walk up there, hop on, and then take the train into Venice. And what's cool is the train station in Venice is right there. I mean, you get off the train and yeah. then, remember we walked out and all of a sudden, there it is. Yeah, I mean, the Grand Canal. It was amazing. Remember when we got lost back there? I mean, mm -hmm. I purposely got lost. Talk yeah. a little bit about that was the coolest thing because all of the tourists all congregate in the really popular areas on the Grand Canal and the bridges that go over and all that. And it was quite crowded and we decided to go exploring more in depth back there. So we just took off and we just went because you can't get too lost on an island. You'll find your way back sooner or later. Talk about restrooms in Venice, Deb. Yeah. Um, restrooms in Venice, you have to pay a fee, so make sure you have change on you. If we, for whatever reason, we didn't know that when we got there and we had no change, so we had to go find some place where we could buy something little and get some change. Um, there's signs on the buildings that point to where the restrooms are and they're clean and pretty accessible. So there's so much to see in Venice. Mm -hmm. uh, should we just start with St. Mark's Square? St. Mark's Square is located in the Piazza San Marco and is easily accessible from the Grand Canal. Well, speaking of the Grand Canal, you know, Venice has literally hundreds of canals that connect the various islands that make up the city. 
And the largest canal is the Grand Canal. The large canal is more like a river as it passes from one side of uh, Venice to the other. You'll see over 170 buildings dating from what, I think they're 13th century? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these buildings line the banks of the canal and it serves as an important waterway in the city for hundreds of years. Only four bridges span the Grand Canal and the canal's kind of like a busy street in New York, but instead of yellow taxis running around, you've got boats, motorboats. Water taxis, I think, the way to go. Oh, definitely. Super inexpensive mm -hmm. and man, you just have your pass, you get on, you get off, you get on, you get off. So one of the most renowned buildings in Venice outside of the Basilica is the Doge's Palace. This overlooks the Grand Canal. This ornate palace is stunning and its front facade features a beautiful, gorgeous arch design made of white stone and a series of diamond patterns on the walls. Well, we can't forget the bridges of size. It is so cool. It's really pretty and it's a small bridge in the relative scheme of Venice. The bridge of size is one of the most viewed structures in the city and is an important historic landmark. It's this tiny little bridge between two buildings over a canal, and it's just really, really pretty. And as legend says, or has it, uh, the prisoners would be taken over that bridge from one side to the other. They would glance at Venice and sigh. Oh, I have to say I would sigh too. I was walking over the bridge and have one last look at Venice. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of walking, and if you do go and it's hot, so take care of yourself when you're doing that much walking. Yes. A lot of water around, but make sure you drink it. Yeah, I mean, sure. not from the canal. <laughs> no, not the canal. Bring plenty of bottles of water with yeah. you. So these gondolas, you know, we've always dreamt of going on a gondola. Did mm -hmm. we do it? No. Oh. <laughs> well, a couple of reasons. You know, we didn't want to be typical tourists, uh, but go ahead, you do it if you want. Mm -hmm. They're super expensive. Yeah. I mean, really expensive. So. We found out later you can you can find out you know get about three or four people with you and just split, split the thing. It. Yep. that's the way to do it. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. that's it for Venice. I mean, mm -hmm. man, there's so much to cover. We only covered maybe two to five percent of it. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. So we encourage you to look at other videos too before mm -hmm. you go, not just ours. And uh, so our next and our last city on our 10-day driving trip of Europe is going to be Rome. Rome. So we can't wait to roam with you in Rome. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. So hi everybody. Welcome to Travel with Danny Dub. I'm Dub. And I'm Dan. And this is our last city of our 10-day driving trip of Europe. And we said last time we can't wait to roam with you in Rome. Well, here we are, Rome. Deb, we talked about Rome for a long time. Forever. It's totally on my bucket list of yep. places I wanted to go. Yeah, and it was just overall the most amazing mm -hmm. of the cities, I think, out of our whole trip. And oh, yeah. mainly because of the history. I mean, we'll get into the Colosseum later, but mm -hmm. we, what we want to do is just touch a, a, a block of the Colosseum. You yeah. know, because it's like you're going back in time 2,000 some years ago. Yeah. We stayed in an Airbnb in, in Rome, mm -hmm. which we're so glad we did. It was a really cool place. It was a nice apartment. It was kind of in a compound area. Right up the hill was like a main street with mm -hmm. shops and restaurants. restaurants. You yeah. felt like you were in Manhattan on you know, Fifth Avenue. Mm -hmm. It was pretty cool. It was super cool. And Deb loved it the most because there were cats <laughs> everywhere around our place. So we had visitors every yes. night. We'd feed them tuna, tuna. fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. They became our best friends. So we just parked our car and took mm -hmm. public transportation, and um, we only had one little, one little mishap. <laughs> just and, uh, a little one. Yeah, this uh, I've told this story just because oh. she won't tell it the way it really was. <laughs> so we're supposed to go to St. Peter's Basilica. We get on the train, but we're trying to ask the Italian lady where this is where we're going. And we thought she told us right. Um, whatever she told us was not right. Uh, we're on the train. We're watching, boom, you know, boom, buildings going by, <laughs> and suddenly the buildings get less and less. Now we have like olive fields, and mm -hmm. suddenly we're in the countryside. We're out of Rome. <laughs> right, and then the other kicker was we had a time slot oh. for our Sistine Chapel tour that we had to be there at a certain time, and now it's getting later and later, and. Yeah. I was in a panic. <laughs> she was. She did what every wonderful <laughs> wife would do. She jumped up on the train and screamed, does anybody speak English? And the place just stopped. All the newspapers come down and everyone was just staring. And here come the young couple. 
well, we speak English, how can we help? <laughs> they got us off the train mm -hmm. and they got us back yep. to where we're going. And, um, and on time. And on time. Yep. I couldn't believe it. It was a miracle. So let's talk about buying like city passes and mm -hmm. tours. You know, we part of our motto is don't be a typical tourist, but sometimes you really want to be. Right? Yeah, I agree. Um, we got, we bought two different tours. We did the Coliseum tour, and then that, and then the rest of, and Rome was part of that. Yeah. So we got to go to um, the Forum, um, the Pantheon, all the, you know, Trevi Fountain, all of that was all included in that tour. And the other tour we bought was a skip the line tour of the um, Sistine Chapel and the museums there. Yeah, it definitely get to skip the lines because mm -hmm. when we got to each location, these and this wasn't even summer, this right. was May. The lines were zigzag, zigzag. Mm -hmm. Here we go, zoom, right by everybody. Yeah, it, was it was so fantastic, and it was so cheap. worth it. It was like 60 bucks a person, mm -hmm. definitely worth it. Totally worth it. Well, let's dig in some of the history of Rome. Mm -hmm. Should we start with the Colosseum? Sure. As we walked into the Colosseum, I was taken back all the way 2000 some years ago when there were a lot of Christians that were martyred in the Colosseum. I mean, horrific things were done to them. So it was kind of a very solemn and troubling time as we kind of walked through there and remembered what happened. So then I was thinking of the gladiators, Deb. I mean, we, we think of Russell Crowe and mm -hmm. oh, what a horrific life these gladiators had. But the history that took place in this uh, Colosseum is amazing, wouldn't you agree? I would agree, and there's so much of it still standing. And we found out later when we were doing our other, some of our other tours, that when Rome fell, they, the people that came in and moved in there just stole all the stone from, from the Colosseum. So what's left is just a small part of what was actually there. You know, as we mentioned, we were on a walking tour, and again, well worth the $60 that we paid. Mm -hmm. uh, but leaving the uh, Colosseum, the next stop was a Roman Forum. Yep. And man, that place, what, what exactly, I can't remember all the details of the Forum, but it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. It was, there's a lot of ruins still left there, and a lot of just areas of where business and politics and just marketplaces, all that kind of stuff happened there during the Roman times. And it was pretty big and yeah. it stretched quite a long ways and you could just roam in there and it was really interesting. So let's see, Colosseum, the Forum, then we walked to? Trevi Fountain. I oh think, yeah, the right? that's where we yeah. throw the coin The coins in, that thing was amazing, absolutely beautiful. Wasn't super crowded, so we could get up right up to it, and it was just a stunning piece of sculpture yeah. and architecture to look at. I think the next stop was the Pantheon. Oh, that was... It was an amazing building, and it's, it's one of the only remaining fully standing functional buildings from Roman times that's still standing. And, and the dome. The dome is amazing. Do some do some research on how they made that thing because yeah. it is incredible that they were able to build stuff like that 2,000 years ago. Well, next stop was our infamous train ride where we got lost and yeah. out of the city and Deb screamed and got us back on track. Yes. No fun intended. it. And uh, we ended up uh, at uh, the Sistine Chapel mm -hmm. and St. Peter's Peter Square. square. Mm -hmm. Walking through the square was amazing because there was hardly any people there at that time of the day and it, it was just beautiful. It was. Go in the morning if you can. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, we went in the morning by the time we finished everything and coming out, the lines were forever. There's so much to see in the museum itself. There's so many exhibits. The, just the artwork and items that they've collected over the years are just mind-blowing. We could have spent hours and hours and hours in there. Yeah, I mean the, the Vatican Museum had more historical from all around the world mm -hmm. artifacts than I've ever seen in my life. I thought the Vatican Museum was going to be all a bunch of Catholic stuff. Right. It wasn't. No. It was loaded with things from China, from mm -hmm. Israel, from the Middle East, all over the world. And uh, yep. like Deb said, we could have stayed all day in that place. It was really cool. Sometimes it's okay to video, sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. um, we were told not to videotape in the Sistine Chapel. Mm -hmm. Of course, I cheated a little bit here. Just had the phone kind of tipped up. 
and this our guy kind of, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're very strict about yeah. it. So, so don't don't do what I did. I'm mm -hmm. trying to be sneaky. They they know the sneaky people that can tell, you know. Yeah, me. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I tried, <laughs> but uh, don't try, please. Mm -hmm. So um, many days in Rome recommended. Yeah. Uh, again, stay in an Airbnb if you can. Uh, stay outside the area about 10 minute bus drive so you're not hustle bustle of it all uh, but take a lot more time than we did yes so there's so much to see in Rome that man we again recommend three to five days but Deb should we tell them about driving in Rome yeah clue them in on driving in Rome Dan do not drive in Rome uh, I did I drove in Rome and mm -hmm. I will say some people boast that they climb Mount Everest or some people boast now that they were a space tourist. Well, I'm going to boast I drove to Rome. He did, and yes. he did a good <laughs> job, too. Hey, in fact, we should sell a t-shirt on this channel, I drove to Rome. Small, medium, large, only $19.95. No. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> well, listen, uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel if you mm -hmm. want to follow us, and hit that little bell because you get uh, notifications when our next video is coming up. Well, so long from Travel with Danny Deb. I'm Dan. And I'm Deb. We'll see you next time. Bye.